Welcome to the world of the long-term dole and long-term on the sick. I should get £200. Yeah, I get 120 a fortnight. We can't live with that side count of money. Meet the people who don't work. My ideal job would be acting. Always wanted to do it since I was five years old. Meet the people who say they can't work. I've got arthritis in my hip, leg, knee and hand. And meet the people who might never work. After 11 years of jail, come out, just thought I've had enough. They don't experience the morning rush to work. Just normal Monday, post office, ice students, Poundland, home, eat, sleep. These are the Brits who can't live without their benefits. <laughs> Basically all plus nine. Right? In Gillingham on the River Medway, unemployment is at its lowest level since 2008. But 34-year-old Richard Broom has been out of work and claiming benefits for more than three years. Mostly I play on computer, on Facebook, like games and stuff like that. Tossing around, doing nothing. Facebook, I mostly go on. I normally check that every 10 minutes when I'm just sitting there just thinking of nothing. Richard isn't currently looking for work, but he does have an ambition, and it's a big one. My skills is mostly acting. It's my passion to become a Hollywood star, to actually come like um, Danny Dyer, to bring more money in, to help my mum out. He lives in a three-bedroomed house partly paid for by the state, with his mum Ina, his brother, and his future wife, 61-year-old Sandra. We've been together over two years now. Over two years. I didn't think he'd go with me, though, because I was older. <laughs> but he has been with another older person before me, so not quite old as me, but... So I, I thought, that's nice, and now I might have a chance. <laughs> Sandra is 27 years Richard's senior. I enjoy being with him. He's taken me places, like Blackpool. She's a mother of seven from previous relationships who claims she can't work. She has been signed off sick for more than a year due to kidney stones. I have worked in lots of things, but I think when I had my kids, I've never, never been back to work. Mum Ina is only eight months older than Sandra, but she's given the relationship her blessing. It was a shock, I said, like, <laughs> but I just turned around and said, oh, we're getting engaged. I said, oh, good luck to you. I don't care about the age gap or anything like that. I mean, she's a nice girl. <laughs> The family are all unemployed, claiming a range of benefits that total more than £1,850 a month. Even with this monthly income, money is still tight and they have fallen behind on the rent, which could prove costly. It's not really enough, but we're just struggling, but we try to make up the payments. In Sheffield, Phil Davies has also been claiming benefits for more than three years. The company I was working for went bust. I ended up on the streets because the government wouldn't pay my rental charges of the property I had. The ex-soldier claims he's not able to work because of various health issues, so he claims employment and support allowance. I suffer with some medical conditions like post-traumatic stress, um, I suffer with uh, sleep apnea and I've got arthritis in my hip, leg, knee and hand. So, so I've got to be careful with what I do. But he believes that his benefits should be a lot more than £400 a month. It's still not enough to sort of live on, pay bills, get food. He's also unhappy with the sums that others apparently collect. You know, the government ought to think more about the people who served, serve their countries and not, and not all these uh, people who's coming into this country looking for free handouts. And Phil has a part-time unpaid job at a local food bank. My part 
the manager, uh, the running and the stores and the food parcels. Making up a food parcel um, of some bits and pieces like tin stuff, um, some veg, some tomatoes, uh, cereals and stuff like that. Alongside the food bank is a canteen that provides hot food to people on low incomes. This area of Sheffield is one of the highest poverty stricken areas in Sheffield. The benefit system is not fair. The money is not, is not keeping up with the rate of inflation. Phil's stint at the food bank has resulted in his biggest benefit. He's found love. We've met over in Robert and we sort of partners. Yeah. You know, we're partners and we met in Robert at, at a food bank. <laughs> Like Phil, Sue is also on benefits. I'm on uh, job seekers yeah. as well as people. Do to me just fill the day. That's how it's done. Together, they receive more than a grand a month. It's a sausage and veg and gravy. And welcome to the madhouse. In Cardiff, 40-year-old Lee Brown has spent all of his life on benefits and in trouble with the law. My dog bite. <laughs> Like your own boy, you know? <coughs> Bit like your own money, you're mad. <coughs> Come on. After 11 years inside, he now lives in a flat funded by the state. This is the bedroom. And obviously, I've got a mattress on the bed, cos I've got a settee next door. So I use the mattress as a settee and sleep next door until I get my discretionary grant and get a sofa. Basic kitchen, microwave off. No frozen, no food in it. And this is my basic fridge. Quite empty, actually. It's milk and juice. Just can't keep much in it anyway. Lee's never had a full-time job and now wonders if he'll ever get one. No, I've never had a full-time job, no. I mean, it'd be nice to have one. Probably keep me busy and give me more money while I'm on now. Do you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's whether they give me a job or not. As a youngster, he was a tearaway. As an adult, he now wants a chance. Well, yeah, I'd do it totally different again. So I know I won't be a crook. But that way, I wouldn't. I would far from it. I would have listened to my elders when I was younger. And now, as I'm older, wiser, I regret what I done when I was younger. Like, everyone deserves a chance in life. After 11 years of jail, come out, just thought I got enough. Lee was recently reassessed and moved off sick pay. Then his benefits were sanctioned further after he broke the job seekers' agreement. If you, like, uh, 10 minutes late for an appointment, they want him to either come back the next day or, or they just sanction you anyway, like. So at the end of the day, as far as they're concerned, you didn't turn up for that appointment, you're not going to turn up for the next one. But at the end of the day, some people do have problems, like. I like, know, I'm willing to work, but it's getting a chance, isn't it? Coming up, the brooms are holed up in court. Well, if we don't get everything by next Thursday, yeah, we've, I've lost my house. Lee defends the handouts he receives. At the end of the day, it is people out there who do take advantage of the benefit system, where people like us, we don't take advantage of it. And Phil loses his cool over who's getting benefits. This country has let too many people in. Enough power to have got idea to say, close the borders. Kent, benefits couple Richard and Sandra are due to be married in a few months. Richard's an aspiring actor and they live with his mom, Ina. I can't believe they're doing their job in that newspaper. Sometimes they even do it when it's raining odd. They've hit Gillingham to collect some of their £1,800 a month benefit money. Like Iceland's? Yep, Iceland's. Shopping done, they pause for a breather. So, yes, yeah, make sure that's a weak one as well. You must do it. Thank you. Thank you. The family do no financial planning, 
so the household budget is quickly spent, leaving little money left to pay the rent and bills. We've just um, been talking about, like, we can't get the gas, and can't get the electric. Um, we, we haven't paid the rent, so that's going to be one big problem. The landlord's going to find out, going to pay that. Richard has been jobless for three years. He was hoping his acting career might take off, but in that time, he's been offered only one starring role. I did that uh, email, didn't I? I told you about this. And I, I thought, no, I don't want to go with it. It's um, doing porn movie. <laughs> and I turned that one down. He does have one role lined up as groom to his 60-year-old bride. Every time I think about it, I'm getting more excited, but probably on that day, I'll probably end up being nervous. I'll probably end up having like, a couple of facts before I actually go into the church. <laughs> oh, I am really looking forward to it. I've said to people that Christmas money, birthday money would be easier to help pay for it. We've sold a couple of things just to do deposit for the church. And I, I put all, anything I've got in it. The entire wedding is being run on a shoestring and they're doing everything to keep the cost down. The picket did said if we can't afford it, then we'll work out some budget arrangements, can he? Mm. That we can pay bit by bit. That would be handy. That would be handy to mm. do that. £30 from eBay. That's um, the trousers, the jacket, and all I've got to do now is get the waistcoat, waistcoat and the shirt and the tie. My brother gave them to me. It cost him £55. They go for me for nothing. Got me tiara as well. And I've got me flowers that I'm going to throw so someone catches it. <laughs> In Sheffield, Sue and Phil are both signed off work on health grounds. They each volunteer at a local food bank. But today, Phil is home alone with the other love of his life. Stobart Trucks and Trailer Series, the old Ford wagon. Six coasters, one of each different type truck. Mr. Stobart's, Eddie Stobart pen and spotter's book. So when you go out spotting, you take it with you and you write down the fleet numbers and registration numbers. Eddie Stobart, Mog. Whilst Phil plays, Sue is off to the doctors to collect some more pills. Got to hope working now. I think my working days are over. Because I mentioned my arthritis will be getting worse and I'll end up in a wheelchair. She receives £312 a fortnight. Benefits cover all but £30 of her monthly rent. See you later. Away from the trucks, Sue and Phil also have a special TV. It's a benefits TV. This is the box. Uh, on the front there, it's got how many hours we got left on TV till we got put some more pound coins in. The box is like a piggy bank. Um, sometimes, sometimes you can get a good rebate and other times you might only get a little rebate, but it's like a piggy bank and that is a good idea. You know, it does save money for you, but you don't get no interest on it. <laughs> Ex-soldier Phil collects £240 in benefits every fortnight, and he's got plenty of time to reflect on the state of the UK today. The great has been taken out of Britain. It's not Great Britain no more, it's just Britain, because uh, this country has let too many people in. Enoch Powell had the right idea to say, close the borders. <laughs> Doctors is getting the blame wars. So then nearly half an hour. Get safe. Uh, Sue isn't satisfied with the service she's getting. I'm changing my doctor's after Christmas. That one down there is taking the proverbial length to be at 3 o'clock, not 25 past. Antibiotics. Got these ones. That's for my arthritis. That's my. That to help me to relax on the night. One gallon of tablets. And that's from a indigestion for Mr. Muck. 
you look at it once, at least three or forty quid at least. With a shout, eight pound five pence. Look, that's a lot on the chemist, eight pound five pence. Like, what? <laughs> Despite her health issues, Sue is still smoking, although her doctor wants her to quit, paid for by the state. An appointment on Thursday. No smoking, no, no smoking clinic. Down the doctors. So I'm gonna have fun and games. Get a lot of patches and that. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to show you is my Stobart umbrella. Stobart golfing brolly. In Gillingham, Richard, his fiance Sandra, and his mom Ina have been behind with the rent for some time. Now they've had some shock news. The landlord wants them out. I had a little tell I've got to be at court today at 10 o'clock. They rent their house for just under £500 a month, but £385 is paid for with state help. They need to make up the shortfall every month, but they've fallen behind. I think it's really, really bad because if we do like end up getting evicted, we'd be out in the, on the streets in this cold weather. If I had a job, you know, I can easily pay the whole rent every month, because then we have more money to like give out and spend for stuff for rent, gas, electric, and stuff like that. Can I join in? I've been up this court for at least three times now. We're over the same things, fixing and rent rears and stuff. I really feel sorry because sometimes when I see that mum's upset, it makes me upset at the same time. And um, there's things that I'm applying for, like work-wise, they're not coming back to me. After 20 minutes, they're out with news. They want to know if you can pay £48. Was that £48? Ne nearly 50 quid every week. It's fixed things quite a bit because I already told them I can't afford that. Plus what they actually asked, another £50 on top. The judge has ordered them to return to court in seven days with a clear breakdown of their weekly budget, something they've never actually figured out. Well, if we don't get everything by next Thursday, yeah, we've, I've lost my house. In Cardiff, Lee says he's trying to turn his world around. At some points in his life, he hasn't wanted to work, but recently he started to volunteer at a homeless centre. This is a place for homeless people who are on the street. Got no, no one to go to. I mean, got nothing, really. They come here, have a meal. They got free soup, bread, cuppers. I mean, it's quite cheap in here for a meal. 150 for the full meal, like. Uh, cuppers are 25p, coffee is 30p. With no money and time on his hands, he reckons it's the perfect place to spend his day. Yeah, I enjoy it. Meet different people every day. Do you know what I mean? Homeless people. It's good, it's satisfying, like. Because I'm doing something for someone else, and see what I mean? It's rather than doing things for myself. Just get a meal every day. We just get a, um, you know, we get free meal every day, like. I mean, sometimes out. they'll give us a little bit of food to take home. Do you know what I mean? But you've got to ask for it. If you don't ask, you don't get it. So at the end of the day, there's people out there who do take advantage of the benefit system, where people like us, we don't take advantage of it. We get stuck, we get problems, and but we still stand on our own two feet and try and make more effort to try and sort our lives out. Like in a way, we give giving back, and we yeah, giving back. Like well, yeah. you know, we've been through the what they've been through. Yeah, we've been Have through the been. same ropes they gone through, and we've instead of us downing ourselves about it all the time, we just got up and took a step forward and made more effort. Like the hope is that his time at the centre could even start to provide him with a CV. I do jobs. I always tell my work in the yard. And it's voluntary work, so that helps me out a little bit, but I still haven't had no replies yet. Back in Kent. Full time and part time in Ashford, transport provided. Can I go in? The potential eviction seems to have motivated Richard to look for work, and he shares his anxieties with the job agency. Can I make an appointment for an interview? I definitely need interested because. 
We might get affected, so we need some money to pay for the rent. I think it's got a shock that we we're going to lose our house. And uh, luckily, it's given a bit of a boost. So we could actually look for work instead of sitting indoors playing on his computer. <laughs> After 15 minutes, he's back out with good news. Let's go. It's like Monday. Monday? Did you tell him about the ninth, John? Yep, I told him about the ninth. All right. All, all he is at the moment is doing training. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'll be starting properly the following week, and it's seven pounds an hour. Even though this budding actor is now ready to work, he still wants it on his own terms. I can work up to 16 hours without them stopping my benefits. So if I ask for a part-time one up to 16 hours, then it won't affect my benefits. But someone in the Broom household is doing the sums and has worked out that the figures might not add up. He's got to work out how much he gets from the job, how much they take out for the um, tax thing or whatever it is they do, and then see what he's left with. If he gets less than what he's on the dole, it's not worth it. That's what I say, it's not worth it. Coming up, Sue's health problems strike. Are you coming to sleep? Come on, wake him. I am with Bulla. Richard and Sandra look ahead to wedded bliss. We have been talking about trying for a baby. And Lee faces some problems with his job ambitions. What can people discover we haven't gone home? <laughs> Basically all plus nine. Gillingham in Kent, 34-year-old Richard and Sandra, who's 60, are facing eviction whilst preparing for their wedding day. They've got plans for the long term, too. We have been talking about trying for a baby, but at the moment it's just Wesley's got a coil and they can't find it. Sandra already has seven grown-up children from previous relationships. If I could have a baby, I would have one. I know I didn't before wanted any more kids because of the people I was with. But now, with, it, with Richard, I don't mind because I, I prefer to have one with him because I, I really care for him. Some of the family saying he's a bit too old, old to have a baby. All I hope is I live longer enough to be with him a long time. But there are more pressing issues. With the threat of being kicked out of Richard's mum's home over rent arrears, he signed up for some temporary work. I'm phoning up the um, temporary agency about the work, so I haven't phoned me back yet. Hello, can I speak to Sally, please? It's Richard Broom. Broom. Got better music on this one. The court doesn't believe the family can afford their home. An income might help prove to the authorities that the rent can be paid. I'm just wondering about the um, interview that I had yesterday. Any more information about me starting Monday or...? Yep. Yeah. Right, OK, thank you very much. Right, thank you, bye. They're waiting for my reference to come back. And then they let me know. This is the thing I don't really like, and that's why I don't like applying for jobs, really, because the reference don't come back in time. Or sometimes the reference comes, comes back not good enough for them, sort of thing. But the job never materialises. In Cardiff, unemployed Lee Brown's benefits are under sanction again after a mistake with his address. This means the £120 a fortnight he's received up to now has been cut to £86. Pounds. i got to run a flat on that, I? Myself, you know, feed myself and things like that. Do you know what I mean? So I find it hard, really hard. His job centre want to get Lee into work, but his lack of even basic skills is a huge problem. I never had a job and ne never had no qualifications. They've never given me no help when I've got out of jail to get a job, to look for a job. At the end of the day, they've left me on benefits and then just chuck me off here, and now I'm struggling to get a job with no qualifications or nothing. Hiya, how can I help you today? 
Yeah, OK, if you'd like to take a seat. More complete discovery I'm gone then. <laughs> Basically all plus nine. The state is paying for someone to help Lee out. So, are you OK using computers or do you need some help? I help, yeah. Yeah, OK, more so you've plus. got all your passwords here? Yeah. OK. So what type of work are you looking for? Uh, kitchen porter, cleaning jobs. Anything yeah. Like that, anything really. I'll just click that for you. So we need to upload your CV as well. Before you can start applying for jobs, yeah. you need a CV online. Yeah, you can do one. Or, You've um, got one done. Have you? With a colleague in you when I first come here. Right. Okay. So we might have it saved on the system. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No amount of job hunting will help get Lee work if he has no CV. A CV I done a while ago. Obviously, they might have lost. I was not uploading on the computer, so obviously I'm going to have to redo it all again now. It's pain really, lad. But the end of the day, it's got to be done, isn't it? Hot washing, is it? Yeah, cleaning up. That's what I was going to say. Yeah? I was in no jail all my life. OK, so that never worked before that at all, you? Yeah? Only in jail. OK. What kind of things did you do in there? Uh, two decorating courses. Decorating, right. Paint, then... Painting and decorating. What was the name of the qualification? Do you remember? Um, is it like a uh, certain level to it, or...? Yeah, I didn't finish the levels up, so I got out before I finished them. If the job hunt doesn't work out, he has a plan B to get his full benefits back. When I was younger, I got um, the doctor signed me off to say that I was, wasn't fit enough to work, obviously, so that's why I've been on a sick most of my life. But officially, Lee is considered fit for work. I'm currently uh, peeling against my sick. But whether the doctors say I'm fit for work or not, I don't know. If I was on the sick, I'd get 240 a fortnight, something like that. But if I'm off the sick and I'm on JSA, I get 120 a fortnight. So it was a hell of a difference, really, like. In Gillingham, Richard still has no work and the family have a court date looming for eviction. Well, this morning, hopefully we can go to cabs since Vice Bury to sort out the problem. And then just normal Monday, post office, Iceland's, Poundland, <laughs> home, eat, sleep. The court wants to know how they spend their benefits money. The brooms are hoping the Citizens Advice Bureau can help them work out their weekly budget, something they've never done for themselves. I've got to take proof of my benefits, see if I can prove to pay my rent. If I can't, then I'm out of my house. Why are they evicting you? Because uh, uh, I've got beyond all my rents. How much? Quite a bit. Just, just give us a stab, yeah? Uh, so just over 2,000. Just over 2,000? What, near a three or yeah. just over? Just over. Richard's mom, Ina, doesn't realise that the actual figure she owes is more than £5,000. I'm just a bit concerned. I haven't got a lot of paperwork here, Ina. So, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure how much the arrears are. I'm not sure how, how short your short, short fall is. What is your rent? Um, not quite sure. I want to know what, what the judge said last week. I want to know what your rent is. I want to know what your housing benefit is. I want to know what your council tax is. Without that paperwork, I can't produce your financial statement because it's no good me putting what we think the rent is, £420, and we think that the housing benefit is 380 mm -hmm. All right, it has to be a, a, a proper document so that the court can see mm -hmm. you're making as much effort as possible mm -hmm. to keep that roof over your head. Right. 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 Thank you very much. I'll see you at 2 o'clock. Right, thank you. After that frank advice, Ina, Richard and the family will finally have to face up to the real cost of living. And for Ina, the bad news keeps on coming. Just got another letter from... the benefit people. So I've got to pay back the money that they have overpaid me. She's received a letter about her housing benefit, saying she's been overpaid for several years and by a staggering 17,000 quid. We will start taking £19.20 from your benefit every fortnight, starting from the payment you are due 
how can they say overpayment for that amount when they should know how much they're paying you and they just stopped it at a certain time of saying that you're overpaid. But just when things can't get any worse, it also turns out Ina's facing allegations over her unemployment handouts from years back. I got a letter through today saying they've actually got to do me fraud. Benefit fraud is a serious offence and means Ina will be hauled in front of another court next week. If I don't turn up on the 15th, it's a prison sentence. In Sheffield, unemployed Sue started having health issues a year ago, but has been out of work for four years. That's due to my arthritis. Well, it was getting harder and harder to get jobs. My health took a turn with the uh, arthritis. And I feel the sleep apnea, all a few little things that I found out. To keep herself busy every week, Sue takes the time to visit local elderly neighbours. I'll just come up to visit Rose, just to check on her to see if she's doing all right. If she needs out, needs any shopping. I get up at four o'clock in the morning for the cats. Otherwise, I don't. I get scratched as well the rains. Because I won't feed in at four. I feed them five, five times a day. But one of Sue's problems soon strikes. Are you coming to sleep? Come on, wakey. Wakey, wakey. I am wake, mother. You're not bloody wake, you're just dug it off. Yeah, all right, baby. And Rose has strong opinions about Britain's benefits culture. Bloody young shouldn't be on benefits at all. I don't think so. It should work. Then Sue's partner Phil arrives to add his view on who's entitled to what. All these foreigners. Oh, Britain's free cash. Britain's free money. 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 Britain's yeah, free that. this. Britain's free this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's wrong. They shouldn't be entitled to our benefits because they haven't worked in Britain. And they should work in this country for at least five years before they get any benefits. And they should speak English on buses, in town, on phones, and not in their foreign languages because they could be insulting a British person. And that is what really gets me up my, gets up my goat. I normally turn around and say, speak English, you're in England. Not, not in your own country, so speak English. If they can't speak English, they should be deported back to their own country. That's, that's my own opinion, and I'll stick by that. As Phil is in full swing, Sue drops off again. Is that his phone ringing? No one. Could I hear the phone ringing? <laughs> back on the Medway, Richard and Sandra have returned to court for their eviction hearing. Well, today we have to go back to court about the affixon. We've got all the advice from the Citizen Spice Bureau. I added my um, income to letter in there saying how much we're getting, and Mum's got her letters saying how much he's getting. She's done a form for a Spencer's Spence or something, I can't remember who it is. Um, and hopefully today they can say that we can stay there, or today it's going to be, no, you can't stay there. The shock of eviction and his mum's fraud case has caused Richard to try to turn over a new leaf. I haven't been on Candy Crush at all or Facebook at all since four or five days now. But I know Steve's been on it. <laughs> yeah, I keep passing their balls. <laughs> Only 20 minutes later and they're out. But Mum Ina is too upset and goes home. It's bad news. We have to vacate the property, but we don't know when. We saw the judge, and he is quite nasty, asking questions about why Mama hasn't been paying, and Mum said that she has been paying. And then the judge settled at Mum, and Mum shouted back, saying, don't have a go at me. And he just, I don't know, it was chaos in there, wasn't it, really? I should have gone out to get work more earlier, but it's a, it's a tough situation where you think, oh, everything will be all fine and stuff like that, but I wish I did have work now and paid all these top-ups and stuff like that before this happened.
Coming up, Phil's frustrations at the food bank boil over. In the back garden, they had 30 to 40 bags full of food parcel bags. What? Well, they've gone round and got food parcels and they just chucked them out, out in the back garden. So they've got rats. And Ina's in the dock again. Very nervous. Yeah. I decided I'll come out crying this time. <laughs> are about to evict the Broom family. Richard has failed to find work and is still relying on state handouts. But despite all his mounting problems, he's still dreaming of being an actor. He's spending benefits cash on a trip to London. Hey, I'm just off to my acting office to take some photos of me so I can update my profile. As this job hadn't turned up down where I live, I thought I'd just do this and hope I'd just get some more jobs out of these lot. If not, then it'd probably be like a year without doing nothing again. He's hoping to start off as a movie extra, and he's here to get some new casting photos. The first one is like full body. There you go. And you can pause it. So it will be your best serious face. Bye -bye. The last time I, I came to the old office, I was there at least half an hour to an hour. But this, this time it's like over and done with. Door closed. Going down. I wouldn't say at the moment I can't work, because I, I can, but it's just, I know it's, it's my, I, I say, laziness really. Back in Sheffield, unemployed Phil and Sue are busy organising the local food bank where they volunteer. Well, we've done a white rose collection. We've got 20, 20 green crates for the food. We've had a donation coming from two churches and then some donations coming from the general public. Food Aware is a local enterprise that takes fresh food rejected by the shops to distribute to the needy. We've been doing this for over two years, and what we have is a, a range of quality control failing produce. We have peppers, satsumas. We deal with predominantly surplus food because our motto is to feed people, not landfill. All right, all right. Yep. But Phil's right? seen what can happen on the street uh, to such off. good intentions. I know a certain road in Sheffield where they had to call the um, health environmental health people ran to the house because in the back garden they had 30 to 40 bags full of food parcel bags what, where they've gone round and got food parcels and they just chucked them out, out in the back garden. So they've got rats. That's cool, huh? With the food bank fully stocked, the couple call it a day. Although Phil has more chores. Take them home and put them on Saturday. What they? Potatoes. I put I pull the spuds at home on Friday night, and they're all ready for Saturday for when we uh, for when Sue uses them in cooking on Saturday. In Gillingham, lovebirds Richard and Sandra will shortly be homeless after the family's rent arrears resulted in eviction, and there is another court case on the horizon. Mom Ina is due before magistrates on charges of historical benefit fraud. You just get called into a courtroom and you have to swear on the Bible sort of thing. And you tell them what happens. And the judges go out, says, all right, what, they're going to come back? And then they tell me what's going on. Very nervous, yeah. I decided I'd come out crying this time. <laughs> With Mum in court, Richard is concerned she could be sent to prison. Mum's um, situation she is in at the moment is quite serious because of the um, amount of money what she owes for the benefit. Um, I'm just hoping that she just come out of it, and if not, then we just have to try to cope. Rather than watch the proceedings, Richard and Sandra wait outside. 
I'm just hoping that she has been seen as she's been let free. I don't want to go in and find out she's been sent down because then that will end up being in a tough situation. <laughs> I don't think I would like to go to prison or anything. I don't think I would cope. Mum's coming. Mum's free. My sister that I got there to have told and plead not guilty. A trial date has been set for a few weeks, but right now, Ina needs to prepare for the family's impending eviction. Three weeks have passed. It's eviction time. They need a new home, but because their rent wasn't being paid on time, it's creating a problem. We're not allowed to have one of the council places because I found out how much rent the is, is. So we've got nowhere to live now at the moment. If they don't find somewhere, they could end up in an emergency B&B or even out on the streets. So you say that we didn't want a B&B, and I said, no, no, actually, but I was told that we weren't allowed to being there all day, we're going to be out in all sorts of weathers. Because I ain't going to be out all weathers in my house. Especially if it's rainy night or something. But there's another problem. Because Richard has still been unable to find paid work, they can't afford a removal van. Today we've got to go down to council and see if we can get a moving grant to help us move to furniture. Moving is not my kind of thing because I don't like packing, I don't like unpacking. Because when you unpack it, you think, oh, I left that behind, and it's stressful, like, find out where everything is. I'm just hoping they will give us the money to get transport. If not, then we just have to stay put, we have to do them um, spotted whites until we actually can get the transport money to move. <laughs> Five minutes in the housing office, and the brooms leave with the council agreeing to pay the removal costs. Well, moving fans turned up, so it looks like we've got to get out. Don't know where we're going, could be B and B. Just have to wait until the moving van's gone and we have to go down to the council to find out where they're gonna put us. I was brought up in this place, got pets in the garden, what died. My favourite pets in the garden is um, a guinea pig, what you used called Fluffy. So it does bring quite a lot of memory but they're going to have to leave more behind than just the memories. Because we haven't got much time, we're going to leave the cooker, the washing machine and the tumble dryer. Although he has a plan, which will require more council help. Hopefully, when we get a new place, we can get a moving grant so we can get the, the gas cooker and the washing machine back from the grant. The family have nowhere to live, so the removal company take their possessions into storage. For now, it's another trip to the council for emergency housing. I'm just hoping it's less than six weeks where we actually can move into a property altogether. And Richard is adamant that this eviction will be their last. We're not going to let it happen again. We're going to pay more what they're asking. So if we do miss one week, at least we know that we paid more the other week. In Cardiff, Lee is still unemployed, but continues to volunteer and hopes to one day find paid employment. Phil and Sue's health hasn't improved, but they're still helping at the local food bank. And in Gillingham, the brooms are now living in a B&B. &B. But Richard finally has taken responsibility and found full-time work on the railways. Next time, meet the mums who are bringing up babies on the dole. I've got seven kids. <laughs> Cap near £500 a week. They've got mouths to feed and bills to pay. The amount of young children I've got, it'll actually cost me more to be at work than it will to be at home on benefits. In some cases, the cost of having so many children is debt. Probably owe about £12,000. And sometimes the biggest kid in the house isn't one of the children. I'm playing poker because there's nothing better to do, and if I win millions, I can come off benefits. If he was a horse, he'd be shot. He'd be put down. Lisa, could you make this young lady a bot bot and me a glass of milk, please? So it might be Thursday night, but the biggest issues aren't on question time. They're on the big debate on Celebrity Big Brother. Hot topics like, is Keith too neutral? Do not miss it after the five news headlines in just a tick on Channel 5.